We gather here to seek the truth, to grow in love, to join in service, to vow once again to live from our highest values and to question our living of this mystery that is life, to honour our kinship with each other and with the earth, to celebrate life's beauty and find healing for its pain. To create a more compassionate world, beginning with ourselves. To wonder at the mystery that gave us birth. To find courage for the journey's end. And to listen for the wisdom that guides us in the quiet moments. In this peaceful space made sacred by our presence here together this day. So good morning, everybody. I'm Sarah Tinker. I'm the recently retired minister with our Kensington Unitarians congregation. And here we are again for our virtual Sunday morning gathering on Zoom. Reaching out and connecting with you wherever you are and um, however you're feeling today and whatever is going on for you in your life at this time. The word connection is, is what this is all about for, for we're living, aren't we, through a time when because of the global pandemic we're still having to think more carefully about how we connect with others and yet, and yet our lives, well they're inextricably connected as this service will be exploring. We're delighted to welcome uh, visitors from our Brighton Unitarian Congregation this morning. It's uh, really good to see all of you and uh, to see faces we know and people we'd like to meet and to be reminded that we're part of a wider spiritual community, nationally and internationally. And a warm hello to all of you gathered here in the realm of Zoom, members and friends of Kensington Unitarians, and a, as well as a greeting to all of you who might be listening to this service sometime in the future on a podcast or watching a video of this service on YouTube. If you are free at, here with us on uh, Zoom this morning, we'll feel free to join in at a level that's right for you. There's no need to join in in any active way, though there are opportunities to speak and to sing at several points if you'd like to. And there'll be a simple body prayer with movement uh, at some point. But as in all Unitarian activities, you can choose to take part in a way that works best for you. Our theme for today is how we choose, how we choose. And my hope is that there'll be something in our service today that speaks to you in some way, uh, wherever you are in life, however you're feeling whatever's on your mind. So let's take a moment to get a sense of what it might mean for each of us to be welcomed for who we are, just as we are, no need to pretend or put on appearances, able for this time to just be ourselves, making this a time for our own thoughts, opening ourselves to insights, Let's take a gentle connecting breath together now, breathing in and out. Using this moment to get a sense of what it is we might most need this morning. And uh, this chalice flame, it connects us. It connects us with the worldwide community of Unitarians and Unitarian Universalists. And it's one light reminds us that we are one people living one life on our one precious planet home. So let's, let's bring those joys and sorrows into a time of prayer and reflection now. I invite you to make yourself as comfortable as you can. Let's all take a bit of time to turn inwards, to, to bring all of ourselves to this moment. 
aligning ourselves with, with that which guides our living in this world. The God of our hearts and our understanding, the, the very ground of our being. As I call on the divine spirit of life and of love to be with us now and to bless all that we say and do together here today. that we're free to worship as we do here today. That's due to the struggles fought by generations that have gone before us. For ours is a free church and it exists because some people refuse to be bound by the beliefs and conventions of their day. They risk their lives because they would not conform. They stood out against the crowd, they spoke their truth. So let's in a quiet moment now think with gratitude of those who won the freedoms we now enjoy. As we consider the world in which we live, we're so aware of, of many places where people are not free. Countries where it's dangerous to admit that you love someone of the same gender as yourself because same-sex relationships are illegal. You might think of the Uyghur people forced in China to denounce their culture. The people of Myanmar and Belarus where it's illegal to hold peaceful protests against their rulers. In Iran, where people of faith, such as the Baha'is and the Zoroastrians, are facing increasing levels of persecution. In Afghanistan, where schools are attacked because they offer education to girls. And here in Britain, our government steps up the forcible repatriation of failed asylum seekers, even when they fear for their lives returning to their countries of origin. In a quiet moment, I invite you to think of places where people are not free. And in our own lives, we will be aware of the freedoms we enjoy, as well as the limitations that we have to deal with, each of us. So let's give thanks for our freedoms and seek strength and, if necessary, acceptance in dealing with our limitations. Or well, let's be ever aware of the choices we make in life and the many ways that our choices affect the lives of others. Bound as we are by ties of mutuality in this one world we share. And may we continue to use the gifts of our free church to help the spread of freedom throughout our world. And may this truly be for the greater good of all. Let's join together in saying those words of affirmation. So may it be. Amen. So there's, um, there's a chance to sing a hymn. Um, the words will be on our screens, we'll all be muted so um, we can sing out loud if we wish or just enjoy listening. We're going to sing The Spirit Lives to Set Us Free. Um, uh, when the words appear on our screen, you'll, you'll notice that uh, the first words of the, uh, in the first verse, uh, the spirit lives to set us free, it binds us all in unity. And that line expresses one of my key messages today, that our freedoms are inextricably 
connected with the life of our shared human community. is called Decisions and it's by Boris Novak and Boris Novak is a Slovenian poet um, and um, he's a university professor, <clears throat> a dramatist and a translator. <clears throat> you can find more about him and his poems online. This is a short poem and like most poetry that engages us deeply, it uses few words to convey human experience. Choices, making decisions. Haven't most of us struggled to make a choice, a re to reach a decision? A real decision is a good word, actually, at some time or another in our lives. I'll pause for a short moment after reading this poem and then I'll read it again. Between two words, choose the quieter one. Between word and silence, choose listening. Between two books, choose the dustier one. Between the earth and the sky, choose a bird. Between two animals, choose the one who needs you more. Between two children, choose both. Between the lesser and the bigger evil, choose neither. Between hope and despair, Choose hope, it will be harder to bear. And here, here it is again. Between two words, choose the quieter one. Between word and silence, choose listening. 
between two books. Choose the dustier one. Between the earth and the sky, choose a bird. Between two animals, choose the one who needs you most. Between two children, choose both. Between the lesser and the bigger evil, choose neither. Between hope and despair, choose hope. It will be harder to bear. Well, thank you, Juliet. That was beautifully read. I only heard that poem for the first time a few weeks ago, and it made such an impression on me. I wonder, I wonder how it spoke to you. We're, we're moving into a time of meditation now, so you might want to get in a comfy position where you can relax for a good few minutes. It's a three part meditation today. We're gonna to start with a, a guided blessing of the body, a, a body prayer, if you, if you like. Um, and we'll invite you to, to join in that at home, if you like that sort of thing, touching different body parts. And that will lead into three minutes silence with our usual chalice flame quietly uh, there for us to focus on if we want. And then our silence will end with piano music. It's a recording made for us last year by our pianist, Sandra Smith, of the old hymn tune, I've got peace like a river in my soul. And feel free to switch off your video um, if you prefer, just let's all soften our gaze now anyway. And oh, take one of those lovely deep breaths. I go deep into the belly and and as we release the breath, we might be able to release a bit of the tension that so many of us store in those muscles of our shoulders and backs, any tension we're holding in our face. So this is um, a body prayer and we're invited at different points to bring our hands to our foreheads, our throat, our hearts, our tummies, then to hold our hands together and then to wrap our arms around ourselves. So join in if it feels the right thing to do. Touching our hands to our own foreheads, if it feels natural for you. May we be blessed with wisdom, knowledge and understanding. May our minds be our friends and our thoughts be creative and helpful. We have been gifted with reason and free will. Let us use these gifts for the good of all. Touching our throats. May our voices be a blessing. May we cultivate both our ability to speak the truth in love and to hear the truth of others. our hand resting at the heart level. May our hearts be blessed with love and with courage. May we know the agony of heartbreak along with the inspiration of true love. Oh, let us heed the wisdom of our hearts. And resting our hands at our tummy level. We are blessed with the gifts of a body. May we know ourselves to be beloved children of the universe. Our bodies are sacred and belong to us and to life itself. May we know the joy of nourishing and nurturing ourselves as well as others. And holding our hands. When we were a baby, our tiny hands were our first contact with the world. Before we could see more than a few feet in front of our face, we grasped the finger of those close to us. 
we catch ourselves with our hands when we fall and we express love and comfort to others with them too. Oh, may our hands be both gentle and strong. May we use them to carry light into the darkness and to bring rest to the weary. May our hands always find the place of greatest need, beginning with our own needs. And may the creator of all things hold us in the palm of her hand, wherever we may go. And wrapping our arms around ourselves. May love for ourselves comfort us in our times of distress. May our love for others shine out as a beacon into the world and bring comfort to all in need. May we know ourselves to be a whole person, a myriad elements working together to form the unique being we are. Oh, may we be blessed in all things and carry blessings with us wherever we go. And may all this be so as we enter now the fellowship of silence together.
This is probably about um, an eight minute address. So just sit back, feel free to turn your video off if you'd rather lie down and stretch out on the sofa. It's, it's, it's around 10.35 a.m. in the world of Zoom here in the UK on a Sunday morning. And well, I wonder what choices you've already made so far today. You have chosen to be here taking part in this uh, Kensington Unitarians gathering. Thank you for being here. I know some of you are here more willingly than others. I, I wonder how many of us have had breakfast. I can see you all on gallery view at the moment. So feel free to wave if you've had breakfast. And the rest of you, I hope you've got a lovely brunch planned for a little while after this service. I'm not going to ask people to wave if they're sitting in their pajamas. That is, that's entirely up to you, that choice. Some of you will have been out already, if you're allowed to at the moment. Uh, you may have been to the corner shop or you've been sitting in the garden or you've had a walk. Most days involve multiple choices, don't they? Choices that we make more or less consciously. That, that act of choosing, that de decision-making process, it's a key aspect of being human. We have free will and it brings us both joys and challenges. Oh, I'm, I'm, it really um, highlights life inequalities as well, doesn't it? Because free will is shaped by so many factors, the society and the culture we live in, the, the education we've received, our our age and our social position, our economic situation, our health, our relative mobility, the list is endless. And some of you I know are facing some serious limitations in exercising your free will. And I imagine that many of us know people who cannot access freedoms that they've previously enjoyed. When I find myself so limited, I hope I'll be able to remember these words from Viktor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, published in 1946 after his imprisonment in Auschwitz. He wrote that everything can be taken from a person but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to, to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. Frankel is here referring, of course, to our inner life. Um, oh, and it pains me to think of regimes the world over that, that actually manage to intrude even on their citizens' inner lives as well as their outer ones. Have you personally had to make a decision recently, a decision that perhaps stopped you in your tracks for a while, a decision a bit more ser serious than what to eat for breakfast? So let's just pause a moment here and have a think if you'd like to about a decision that you've made. How did you go about that decision making process? How did you how did you know when you reached the right choice, the right choice for you? It's a remarkably complex process, decision making and choosing, isn't it? Oh, and we humans, with our reflective capacity and our imaginations, we can do a great deal of thinking about life's turning points. In those times of change, when decisions are needed, um, I've always been grateful to whichever course it was that I went on, where they told us that one Latin root of, of um, the word decide is caedere. I don't know if I've um, pronounced that correctly in Latin. It's a verb meaning to cut, to cut. When we make decisions, we potentially cut away alternative choices. So no wonder we sometimes find it hard to decide to choose one path over another, for we can't take every path. We can't fulfill every potential. So it's not surprising then that humanity has created so many ways of helping us to reach a decision. Do any of these describe some processes that you perhaps use. We might speaking, speak of consulting our inner guidance, asking God for wisdom or offering the decision up to a higher power. We might consult, consult sources of divination, 
the I Ching or, or rune stones of ancient times, the tarot deck of cards. The Taoists speak of being in the flow, the Wu Wei sense of a choice being right. Some people weigh their decision alongside the principles that they use to guide their life, a kind of moral compass that helps set their course. Others seek the wisdom of teachers and those they trust, those who inspire them. We may talk with friends or family and we may talk it over inside ourselves. Some of us speak of gut instincts guiding us in certain directions in life, of, of following our intuition. And some of us have probably experienced the feeling of helplessness that can come upon us when we we really don't know what to do for the best. When, when that concern about making a wrong choice stops us in our tracks. I'm grateful again to various teachers and courses over the years for the encouragement to be brave and encouragement to trust ourselves in life, knowing that even when we make a decision where the outcome is not as we planned, yet with a bit of good fortune, we may still have the capacity to work with what then unfolds. The future isn't written. There is no perfect place to get to in life. No rigidly dualistic right and wrong in our choosing, no. Rather, there is an unfolding, a developing, and an ongoing relational expansive, responsiveness, relational responsiveness between us and life's other players a relational responsiveness between us and life itself. And it, it's that relational aspect of choice that, that is a key point of my message today. Um, this evening, you are probably aware here in London, there's a football match taking place and, that, and it matters a great deal to some people and not at all to others. You can choose whether or not to watch the match on television. You can choose which team to support. You're free to respond to football in the way you decide. Well, up to a point. You can shout whatever you want at your TV set in your own home, and you can express nationalistic fervor in whichever way you choose. But if you're one of the lucky, and I'm putting the lucky in inverted commas this morning, if you're one of those lucky 60,000 football fans going to Wembley tonight, well, I'd say it's not OK to shout abuse when another country's national anthem is being played. And I'd say it's not OK to shine a laser beam onto the face of the opposing team's goalkeeper. We have laws to govern such behaviour. And most of us hold a very clear moral sense of fair play and respect for others. On, on our path through life, when making choices, we have to weigh up certain factors. And one factor in human decision making, it has to be, how will my choice affect others? We're social creatures, aren't we? To paraphrase uh, John Donne, no person, no one person is an island entire of itself. Each is a part of the entirety. Professor Stephen Riker was quoted this week in The Guardian as saying that dealing with the pandemic cannot be an I thing. It's a we thing. That expressed clearly for me the need to think of others as well as ourselves. For we're in this thing called life together, aren't we? Here, even in this little gathering today, there'll be a great diversity of attitudes to all of this. We have to find ways of understanding and to some extent accepting our differences whilst allowing people to express their own particular needs and choices. We have a government that is choosing to place responsibility back onto us as individual citizens when it comes to control of a very infectious disease. Some people will be delighted that restrictions on their personal freedoms are coming to an end. Some people find the thought of such freedom very frightening and dangerous indeed. So my plea to all of us in the weeks ahead is to stay awake to the many ways in which our choices affect the lives of others. 
let's try as best we can to stay open hearted in response to other people's differing points of view and oh let's let's seek those wellsprings of empathy within us care for others and care for ourselves the spirit lives to set us free and it binds us all in unity there may it be amen So we have another opportunity to sing a hymn now. Again, just feel free to read the words uh, that are going to appear on the screen soon, that's fine. Um, I've chosen a hymn uh, called, What Does the Lord Require? It's based on words from the prophet Micah, one of those hard hitting Old Testament prophets who could tell the people in just a few clear words how best to live their lives. He wrote, it's been told to you, O human, what is it that the eternal seeks from you? That you do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. The hymn words um, also come from John Bunyan, the 17th century Puritan preacher and writer. By all accounts, Bunyan was a remarkably powerful preacher, something in the spirit of those Old Testament prophets like uh, Micah. And the hymn tune is also quite rousing. So feel free to imitate a preacher of old, inspiring the crowds as you sing. some announcements now. Um, big thanks go out to John and Janine for all the focused background work of hosting today and to our musicians Abby, Sue and Sandra. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure to spend time with you here today and we'll be back again next week for a 10am service here on Zoom when Jane Blackall is organising a congregational service which has the de delightful title of Being Bored. Surely a state of being experienced by no Unitarian churchgoers, or, or maybe we're all so enlightened, we know that boredom is the secret portal to the state of Nirvana, eternal bliss. You'd best come along and find out next Sunday. 
And you're also welcome to join us on Tuesday for the 10.30 Zoom coffee morning. Uh, you can book your place for the uh, next in-person gathering, which is next Saturday, 17th of July. That's 10.50 for an 11 a.m. start. Do book your place with that. That's at the church in Kensington. And details are in our weekly email or just get in touch with me. And there are a couple of spaces in today's Heart and Soul session. It's been brought forward to 5.30 p.m. this evening in order to avoid, avoid the uh, ball sports later on the TV. And the theme is responsibility. And I haven't told Jane, but I've recommended that all the English football fans attend Heart and Soul before the match to put them in the right frame of mind. So thank you, all of you who've made donations recently towards church running costs. It's really appreciated. You're keeping our particular work going out there in the world. Um, don't forget that we've um, a virtual coffee time afterwards. We'll all stay together and have a chat. So feel free to stick around if you'd like to at the end of the uh, service. And we're going to have some closing words in a moment, followed by George Harrison's Here Comes the Sun to cheer us on our way. So I invite you, if your device allows you to select gallery view now so that we can see one another in community for the closing words, apart yet together. So I extinguish our chalice flame, but not the warmth of this community. And I send the light of this candle out into the world that all people might be free to choose their own path in life. And may we who know the privilege of freedom know also our responsibilities to others. For none of us walk this path of life alone our paths are forever entwined with the paths of others. So may we do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly together all the days of our lives. Amen. Go well, all of you, and blessed be.